I'm Catherine Ross and I'm here live from the NYC with Jim Kramer. Jim, we've got some trade headlines in the news, but they don't really seem to make it to moving markets. Right. I, I think that there are people who believe that, uh, as my friend Andrew Sorkin wrote this morning, that the trade people won over the defense uh, national imperative people. Uh, that's uh, Lighthizer and Navarro versus Mnuchin. Um, and because of that, I think that there's a belief that the president's going to flip again that it's just going to be, well, wait a second, people are going to say, I'm too soft line. So uh, the inconsistencies are getting to people. Uh, I think it's wrong. I think there's going to be a big buy of, uh, uh, of something by the Chinese. Uh, is it a win? I think that the win will be cast as, hey, we got away with all these big tariffs already. Let's get some more time. Let's see what's going to happen. But I think the idea that it's uh, that it's insignificant is a big mistake, which is why we're buying and we'll get very big in Caterpillar. And I want to ask you, do you think that the markets would have moved more if it hadn't been a holiday week? Well, a holiday week has historically been a pretty good time. I think that the skepticism, as I wrote in Real Money, uh, is kind of what's driving this market. I mean, it's interesting. I follow my Twitter feed. A, a phenomenal number of people uh, said... Yesterday's rally was phony. Well, you know, no one ever says sell-offs are phony. They always say rallies are phony. And it's that bias that has made it so that we've been able to rally. Because if everybody has one foot out the door, they're going to be constantly trying to keep track, uh, beat the S&P. And you can't beat the S&P with one foot out the door. All right, guys, and you can read more about um, his column, which is all about bulls and why he feels confident yeah. in the market over on realmoney.com. The only thing that I'm changing my mind on from that piece is that Delta reported some great numbers today. And so the airlines, at 10 times earnings, maybe Delta you think is too bullish. I come back and say, why doesn't Delta have a market multiple? That's how well it's doing. So Nike this morning, they pulled their Betsy Ross shoe after Colin Kaepernick, among yeah. others, spoke out about the shoe. And Jim, I got to ask, I mean, what are your thoughts here? Well, I mean, I see people selling Nike. There's a protest, Arizona governor saying we don't need you. Um, you know, this is a tough one for me personally because my father's workshop, as my kids called it, was across the street from Betsy Ross House. Uh, I was there 50 years. So I've been to Betsy Ross House, I don't know, 50 times, 60 times. And I I've never thought of it as racist. I've always felt of it as bravery against the British. Uh, who are racist, and, and I, 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 it's just hard, I think, that Kaepernick um, it stands for something great, which is anti-slavery. Um, but I went to hear an unbelievable lecture by Eric Foner, who is a great uh, left-wing historian, talking about how the uh, Emancipation Proclamation was a war document, not a document, uh, free the slaves to fight against the South not a uh, emancipation proclamation for black for slaves and it's impossible to say you know to put a spin on anything i mean i think we we hold out lincoln is a great man in this country um by the same token as kaepernick lincoln is not a great man so you know you were more enlightened than we used to be uh maybe this is part of the enlightenment um i, I read a good piece about uh the other day about how hitler took it it looked at the laws that uh, America had about Jews and, and, and adopted them. I, I mean, we can spin anything. I guess what I'm saying is that Betsy Ross remains a hero of mine and, and always will. Let's take a step back and let's take this from an investing education angle because I think that this is a topic both you and I care deeply about. Yes. So taking a step back, looking at Nike and how they're paying attention to their influencers and listening to them, when a company is showing that, when they're taking a step back and listening to people, are they drawing in millennial investors? I think yes. I think that sustainability is a way to bring in millennial investors, stay out of landfills, so to speak, stay millennial investors. I think equal opportunity, millennial investors. I think uh, understanding the need to be fresh and natural, uh, millennial investors. Hence Chipotle, number three, uh, a gainer in the S&P 500 this year. Uh, I, and so I... I think it's very important. I, I think that the whole anti-Dow, I mean, if you remember what I asked the Dow Chemical CEO, which was my eldest daughter, who is a, um, she's a, she's a mentor to a lot of troubled youth. My eldest daughter said, please ask him how he can live with himself. Now, that is a very harsh question. And yet, when people look at the island of plastic in the Pacific, that's what the millennials think about. My generation thinks about earnings per share. 
uh, and what I'm saying is you have to factor you have to factor this into bias now because the millennials. It's why fossil fuels, I think, are so damned. Let's move on and let's talk about Constellation Brands, which are, is our real money yes. stock of the day. Now they got a series of price target increases right. um, throughout this week. And, and that, well, it's kind of beers the stock of the day because mm -hmm. Anheuser Busch is going to be listing in Hong Kong. Shouldn't mean anything, but people get excited about that. I'll tell you what's exciting about Constellation. They are still the only growth in the beer market. The last quarter was better than expected. July 4th is a beer period. If we get a hot week, hot uh, next, remember where, July, where Independence Day falls, you have a little bit more of an extension versus year over year. And so someone I think on Monday will come out and say, hey, Constellation, plus you get canopy. But is this enough for investors to be taking a sip out of Constellation? You think yes right now? You know, I just think I'm, I'm concerned about Constellation just because I'm, I'm not crazy about um, the entire beverage market. But I do think that, uh, and Bill Newlands is a friend of, uh, uh, of, of the street, uh, Bill, because he was at our teaching. Bill, Bill Newlands going to do a good job. I am concerned that it's not enough. A hot July is not enough. But the street's oriented toward buying Constellation, so that's why it's kind of exciting. Let's take a step back, because you just mentioned the Anheuser-Busch um, IPO in Hong Kong, and just so everyone knows, that's Budweiser Asia that is um, IPOing in Hong Kong. But taking that from an investing education standpoint, when you see a company going for a IPO abroad, what should you be thinking as an investor? Um, you know, I prefer you to buy MSCI. MSCI is the um, entity run by Henry Fernandez, who is a friend of mine, uh, which is one of the best performers in the S&P this year, uh, which is the keeper of all the indices, foreign indices. Uh, and uh, that's the way to do it. I, I, otherwise, other than Novartis, I'm recommending no foreign stocks. If Nestle's were to list here, I would put them on the list, but they don't list here. All right, Jim, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, y'all, we are now switching over to our Action Alerts Plus daily rundown show over on ActionAlertsPlus.com. Catch us there. I'm Catherine Ross, and I'll see you tomorrow.